we are absolutely delighted to have this opportunity today to give you all the sneak peek of the virtual conference, uh, the first virtual international AIDS conference. So as all of you probably know, the 2020 conference was always going to be a little bit different. It was the first time that the conference was going to be organized in San Francisco and Oakland, two sides of the Bay in California. Um, and then back in March, the IAS Governing Council, as well as the Conference Coordinating Committee for AIDS 2020, which GATE is a esteemed member of, made the decision, the tough decision, to take the conference uh, virtual. As you can imagine, there were quite a number of changes that needed to be made in order to uh, take a conference as large and complex as ours and pivot it to a virtual format. The first big change has been the length of the conference, the duration of it. In order to give the maximum amount of time possible for all of our pre-conference participants, the pre-conferences will be opening up, as you can see, next Tuesday already, Tuesday the 30th of June, and running all through the week to the 3rd of July. Then on the 4th and 5th of July, the on-demand content will become available. This will enable anybody that is coming on, any delegate that is coming onto the platform to access all of the program committee designed content as well as all of the abstract content. So the uh, e-posters, oral abstract sessions, um, as well as the bridging sessions that kind of pull the different facets of the conference um, together. So that's what we internally lovingly call our AIDS 2020 Netflix. Then on the 6th of July, the original opening date of the conference, we will have our opening sessions uh, running uh, at four different times during the day. We will also at that point open up the Global Village and launch the youth program as well as start our program of community leadership and scientific workshops. Those will be running continuously throughout the week. We also get to open up our exhibition both in the Global Village and on the delegate side and start having an absolutely packed day of satellites. On the 7th, 8th, and 9th of the conference, we will add in the live sessions to the conference, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in just a moment. As you can see, the satellite the exhibition continue, and then on Friday, we start the day off with the closing and then go straight into the COVID conference, which similar to the Global Village, is free and open access to the general public. So how do you take a conference that has people from 175 countries and make it accessible around the world? Since the conference was originally supposed to take place in San Francisco, we pegged the conference scheduling to San Francisco time. And fortunately, the hour between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. in San Francisco is the hour on the planet when most of the people in the world are awake. So that will be when we have our first prime session. The prime sessions are a new combination of the plenary sessions, the special sessions, as well as the rapporteur summaries and the community movies community videos uh, and, and broadcasts. So those, as you can see, are the yellow slots that will be running it four times during the day. So in any given 24 hours, you'll have four different times where you will have brand new live content. And this is again between Tuesday the 7th and Thursday the 9th. So the slots in San Francisco timing are 7 a.m., 1 a.m., 5 p.m., sorry, 7 a.m., 1 p.m., 5 p.m., and midnight. Um, here in Europe and, and Africa, that will be 4 p.m., 10 p.m., then there's one for the truly dedicated at 2 a.m., uh, but then again at 9 a.m. All of the content will be recorded and available for when people do wake up and want to see the content if they miss something while they happen to be asleep. 
As you can see, each of these prime slots, the yellow slots are bracketed by these blue hours, which is when we will have the late breaker sessions as well as our concurrent satellite sessions. As you can see, the conference program remains as robust as ever. We have a huge variety of activities taking place through the Global Village and the Youth Program. And as I mentioned before, on Friday, we'll have the COVID-19 conference. Both of those will be completely open access to the public. Also, we have the full uh, program uh, that's divided between invited sessions and submission-based sessions. And we have over 2,000 abstracts that are going to be presented, um, a robust uh, program of the symposium bridging sessions, and as I said, um, a wide variety of pre-conferences and satellite sessions. One of the fabulous features of running a 24-hour virtual conference is that some of the satellite sessions and workshops will be able to be played multiple times. So delegates that might miss the session the first time around will be able to see it in a replay later on during the day or during the week. So what can attendees expect? We've listed four of them here, but I do encourage everybody to visit the conference website and click on the page that says why attend. It gives a fabulous outline of all of the richness that the virtual conference, as well as some of the new perks that we're discovering, will be able to offer. So the round the clock access is something that's really going to enable a much, much broader accessibility for the content of the conference. We will have everything that we had at the, the in-person conference, um, except the overpriced muffins and the freezing air condition. Um, of your, your in-person conference. Uh, the interactivity and networking features have been something that we've put a lot of effort in order to ensure that people have the ability to chat. And as always, the International AIDS Conference is breaking ground and we will be the first virtual conference to provide an activist platform. So, what will this new venue look like? As you remember at the start of this uh, presentation, I had two pictures of the venues that we had planned to be in. Here's where we're going to be instead. So when delegates first enter the conference, they will arrive in the main lobby. As you can see, there are the different rooms where, or different hallways that people will be able to uh, enter and then see the auditorium, the pre-conferences, workshops and exhibition. There's the activist lounge over here on the right and the global village over here on the left. We know this is a new experience for lots of people. Uh, so front and center, we will make sure that there is a help desk that will be staffed 24 hours a day. In the main auditorium is where all participants will be able to access the prime sessions that I told you about, but as well the on-demand sessions the e-poster presentations, as well as all of the satellite sessions. The activist lounge is where we will have our community activist liaison facilitating and, and generating the conversation that we hope the activist community will bring to our lounge and ensure that the, as always, the important conversations that don't happen in the main auditorium are still hosted and had here at the, the conference. On the Global Village side, we will have, uh, again, similar lobby. Uh, this time, the hallways are slightly different with the different content that is available in the Global Village. Um, and as always, there's going to be the help desk and media center access and a way to, for delegates to be able to pop back out into the main conference program. The Global Village will also have an auditorium where in addition to film screenings, people will be able to participate in interactive workshops. They'll be able to visit art exhibits. They'll be able to attend sessions, meet the experts. Um, and again, the broad, rich variety of, of content that we have come to love and expect at the, the Global Village. 
The Global Village exhibition space will, as always, be the combination of NGO booths as well as networking zones. The booths will be staffed by the NGO themselves to ensure that there's always somebody to, to interact with and engage with during the, the conference. Um, there will be chat functionality either one-on-one -on -one or with larger groups. And in the networking zones, those organizers will be able to pull together and as always run their own programming throughout the week. And as I said before, there will be a 24 hour staffed help desk. The help desk will provide not only technical support, but also um, the, the moderation um, and community uh, serve as our community watchdog if any of our delegates are feeling uh, that something's not quite right, something's going on in the chat, it's making them uneasy, uh, then the help desk will be able to step in and uh, be the place of support for all of our, our delegates. One last thing that I wanted to end the presentation with is that it would be absolutely fabulous if everyone on the, the webinar would participate in our demonstration of resilience, sharing their story of resilience. If you haven't already had the opportunity to do so, we warmly encourage you to visit the Profiles in Resilience. You can find Erica's there on our homepage as well. And we know that everybody in the AIDS community, particularly at this time, is, in, is living the resilience experience and theme. So we want to open the door and hear all of your voices. So if you haven't done so already, please do share your story of resilience.